119, beginning verse 1. He says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Verse 7, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When shall I have learned thy righteous judgments? This is Psalms 119, 1 through 7. Verse 8 says, I will keep. Actually, verse 7, finish verse 7 says, When shall I have learned thy righteous judgments? Verse 8 says, I will keep thy statutes. O forsake me not utterly. Amen. That's a good scripture to really meditate on about keeping you in the mindset of God's word in your heart. When you get the word in you, you learn how to keep the Lord precepts and keep his statutes, which is his laws and decrees. You learn how to trust in God and have revere or respect for him by keeping his word diligently. Diligently means I keep doing it over and over and over until I get it right. We as human beings, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. But it's up to us to make a determination that I'm going to continue to seek him with my whole heart. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday night Bible class. I'm Pastor Charles Emery, Sister Pastor of Dean Faith Fellowship Church. I've been teaching these lessons from different books for at least uh, four and a half years now. And I thank God for the diligence because too many people have started out in this Christian race and have fallen by the wayside because of the iniquity of the heart. But the words that bless are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. So there's a blessing in your diligence. There's a blessing in your diligence. There's a blessing in your obedience to follow after the Lord God, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and thy strength. You'll find out in your persistence that many attacks are going to come against you. But the word reminds us that only the diligent will be blessed when you seek the Lord with your whole heart. Not stagnant, not part of the heart, but the whole heart. But allow the Lord God to be in your heart, your mind, and your strength. And I guarantee you, when you walk by faith and not by sight, the promise of God's word, everything about you reconnects itself to the promise. Reconnects itself to the promise. And God will manifest his power in your life, every day of your life. Amen. So we're going to open up with a word of prayer. Glory to God. Word of prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give me one second. My tablet disconnected. I need to get this back going. The devil is a lie. We're going to have some good lesson tonight. We'll have a good lesson. And that's one thing about it. When you're doing the work of the kingdom, the enemy wants to bring any type of destruction he can to pre prevent you from doing what God wants you to do and being diligent in your faithfulness to his word. To hear the word, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Let me put my other glasses on, y'all. You're getting old now. Nah. When you get old, your eyesight begin to change, and you have to adapt with the changes. Sometimes you got to get some reading glasses. I'm put on my readers, all right? <laughs> Amen. Put on my readers. All right, much better. A lot clearer. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to a, a word of prayer, and then we'll get into our lesson tonight. We're going to talk about Athaliah's strive on stealing the destiny of our children. Athaliah strives on stealing 
the destiny of our children. What does it mean to strive? I mean, you have a desire, you have a passion, you want something so bad, no matter how you get it, you're going to get it. You keep striving, you keep persevering, you keep pressing in until you get the manifestation of what you want in your life. Amen. Let's go into the word of prayer. So, grace to God, our Father, I thank you right now, God, for this opportunity to share your word. Pray, O oh God, that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation from the Logos. Give us a rainbow word that we can pattern to our lives to help bring change in our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, God. The areas of our lives we find ourselves struggling, Lord God, we lay it at the altar and not pick it up again. Forgive us for our sins, O oh God. The sins of heart, the sins of the mind, the sins of Father, the sins of action, the sins of the mouth, O oh God. Forgive us, God, that we have nothing to hinder our prayers from being answered. Cleanse us from all the righteous, God. Remove the business of the day from us, O oh God, that we have nothing to distract us from hearing your word. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Speak, Lord, to our hearts by your word. Speak by your Holy Spirit, God, a word that will help change our destiny, God. Even the lives of our children and their children's children, God, for the better that you will be glorified. Let us be bold enough to share the gospel. With those we meet in the street, with our family members of God, our neighbors, our community, God, give us a holy bold to speak the word of God with power and authority, unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force, so would not prevent this word from getting forth into the airwaves to bring changes in the lives of the hearers. And we thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Britain. God bless you, my brother. Amen. Amen. You know, we live in a society where this crime rate is so high. Everywhere you, you turn on the news, it's, it's so much going on in the lives of the people all around us. We're, we're living in a time where you got to pray. You got to pray. Even the sinner man is starting to pray now. Because people are realizing that prayer does change situation. It does change lives. We're all living in a time where we're broken, we're torn, we're... we're with criticized, with ostracized, with cast aside, all kind of stuff happened to throw the full loop. Many people are under attack. Save the unsaved, everybody's under attack. And it is up to us to determine in in our mindsets, in our hearts, what our responses are gonna be. It's up to you to make a choice decision. Are you gonna respond to the situation in a negative way or a positive way? Because God has a remedy for every situation that we go through in life, and that's through His Word. That's why it's so important to get the Word of God in your heart and allow the Word of God to speak to you. Because the Word of God does speak volumes. Because we trust the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understandings. It says, in all thy ways acknowledge Him, He'll direct your path. That's a true statement. God will direct your path. And the way He does that, He'll send people in your life it has the wisdom, the knowledge, the know-how of what you need to do to help redirect your steps. We always say we, we're studying God's Word, believing God's Word, we're praying God's Word, but we're not receiving the answer when we pray God's Word because God says the answer through other avenues. The Word is just a platform that we use to guide us in our everyday living to give us a message of hope. But the response comes from other people that God sent into your life. Even a drunkard can speak a word to you that help give you a word of encouragement. Even a drug addict can give you a word that will help give you a word of encouragement. It doesn't matter what you go through in life. God has a way of speaking to our hearts through any person who's willing to have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church. And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks through whom God wants to use. But we have to be willing to allow God to speak to us and help change our direction and the trajectory of our mindsets that we have a way that God can change us to become better in our lives. I speak blessings and favor over every individual, no matter where they are. Those who hear this word, don't hear this word. I speak into the air, air to the airways, the atmosphere. I speak the word of God that God will cause blessings to rain upon every individual who needs God to bless them. He said he reigned on the just as well as the unjust. That means the sinner or the, un or the saved. It doesn't matter who you are in the eyes of God. God will rain blessings on whoever he chooses to rain blessings on. 
I thank God for the different people he sent in my life throughout the years. I've been in ministry 40 years as of this month, 40 years. And I thank God that he allowed me to experience many different things in life as well as go through a lot of challenges, a lot of hiccups, a lot of hurts, a lot of pains, a lot of struggles, deal with bad habits, deal with strongholds. Because everything that we go through in life defines your character. Your character is built up upon your faith in God to bring you through the troubles you go through. He didn't say stay in the trouble or settle in the trouble. But he said he would lead you through the valley of shadows of death. That you would fear no evil. Evil going to come no matter where you turn. People are going to be evil in their hearts, evil in their conversation. They're going to be evil in the way they look at you because they just don't like who you are. But it's up to you to make a decision in yourself. Who cares what people think about me? Who cares what they say about me? I know who I am. I'm going to continue to live the way I feel I need to live for the best interest of my own self. That the life I live will be an example for those who follow in under me. We have children who follow us. We have other adults that follow you. You got people that are watching you that you know are watching you. And we have to be careful of the things we allow to be projected from our hearts out of our mouths that are negative. Because so many people become negative because of the things that hurt them. But I found out the key that God can take the negative stuff in my life and use it as a stepping stool to elevate me to a higher place in here where I need to be. Amen. So our lesson tonight, as we talked about last week, we talked about the attack on David's genealogy, his bloodline, his family. Where Amnon, his son, killed the other brother, killed Absalom, and, and all these different things that took place where uh, Amnon raped his sister Tamar, and, and, and God brought judgment on him where he ended up losing his life. So we're going to talk about tonight, after Leah thrives on stealing the destiny of our children. That subject alone by itself is a very powerful subject. Praise the Lord. Hello? There you go. Okay. So, I had to get my sound bank raised. I'm tripping on here. So, the, the issue comes in is when you think about destinies, it's something we have in our heart, in our mind, a direction either we want to go or something we want to fulfill in life. It's up to us to make a decision in ourselves what is the outcome of my destiny going to be. Even when it comes to our children, that's why I said Athalia. We talk about these three spirits, Jezebel, Athalia, Delilah. Jezebel, the mother, who was wicked, who was deceptive, who was controlling, who was manipulative, sees her husband's throne as the king to take his place. Her daughter, she has a daughter named Athalia, who comes along, and the daughter has the same mindset, the same attitude, the same spirit that came from her mother. And she decided to do the same thing. She wanted to seize the throne. Her son was the king. But her son was killed. So she took the throne and she tried to kill off her, her bloodline by killing all the grandchildren. So she killed all the grandchildren. So she thought. But God had one that was set aside who was waiting to take the next lineage of the king to become the king of Judah. So we're living in a time where we have to guard our children's heart. As parents, as grandparents, we need to cover our children. We need to speak, speak life into our children, speak encouragement to our children. We need to speak the word of God over our children to help them begin to see themselves where God wants them to be seen. Because the enemy is doing everything in his power to kill our generations. You don't believe it? Look at the news. Kids have been killed every day in car wrecks because they stole a car, somebody hit them by mistake, or they in a stolen car, driving foolish, and they get killed in a car accident. It's, it, kill, children being shot for no reason. Somebody just drive up to the children to shoot them because they just don't like them. Or they're in a gang initiation where they have to do certain things to get the approval to be part of the gang. 
there's a new gang that I just found out about called the Street Rider Gang. And what they do, they go around stealing cars and robbing people. You know, so we have to really pray for our children. They do not be influenced by the negative influence of other people in our communities and in our nation, in our cities. A lot of these video games that many of them are playing is programming their minds to be destructive. One of the games that most children love when I was growing up, you know, watch my, I mean, watch my children grow up, was Grand Theft Auto. A lot of people know about Grand Theft Auto. It teaches you how to go steal a car and go rob people and kill people on the street. And kids are mimicking the exact thing they learn in the video game today in our society. So they're killing off generations because that's the plan of the enemy. The plan of Athalia, the spirit of Athalia is, is stealing the destiny of our children by killing them. And I listen, as I do each week, I read the, the, the chapter and I expound on the chapter in the book to give you understanding what God wants us to understand for our own personal lives, even for the lives of those around us. How many times have parents grieved over the path of children, of their children have chosen, the path their children have chosen, right? Jails are filled with God's children who have surrendered to demonic powers of Athaliah and have chosen to murder, deceive, rob, and remain rebellious. Isn't that true? This is in our society today. Many of them have chosen this pathway of destruction because of the demonic influence of the enemy has sent them somewhere along in that pathway who's full of wickedness and deception to trick them and manipulate them to follow them to do something that's out of order to find themselves locked up in the prison system. You got children who are in jail who need to be in jail. You got children in jail who needs to be in jail. You got adults in jail who don't need to be in jail who's wrongfully accused. Or just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time and wrongfully accused of something they didn't even do. But they're blamed for crimes they never have committed and spend years in jail. I've known throughout the years that many people come on the news and they testify how they were wrongfully imprisoned for many years. And then a judge, a, a lawyer come along, a prosecutor begin to reopen the case and, and find more evidence to prove this person was, was innocent and not guilty. We're living in a time where we have to pray that God will cover our minds, cover our hearts, keep us from danger seeing the insane because the enemy is not playing fair. He's going around doing what he can do to destroy our lives. Precious one, the devil targets our generation through the spirit of Je Je uh, Athaliah. I'm going to say Jezebel as well because it's Jezebel and Athaliah. The mother and the daughter. But we're going to get on later in the other chapter. we got three chapters left in this book. You're going to find out that Athaliah had a daughter named Delilah. You know the story of Septa and Delilah. This is her daughter. Because Septa was the strongest man in the Bible. And Delilah came, who was a Philistine, came with an MO, a mission order to find out where his strength lies. And because he played with the enemy, didn't shut it down, the enemy ended up deceiving him to tell the seeker where his strength came from. And he eventually cost him his life. Precious ones, we got to pay attention. This demonic force does not surrender easily and seeks to destroy entire generations with only one, one person who will agree with her wicked plots for power. Only one person. Have you heard the term, one bad apple spoil the whole bunch? It can take one person in the group of people to wreak havoc in everybody's life, to disrupt your peace. Take one person to come into your circle and spread gossip and rumors and divide a crowd. We have to be careful who we connect with, who we allow in our circle, because many people who smile in your face do not have your best interest at heart. They're in a position by the enemy for your demise, and they're looking to destroy you. Even Abraham had to fight for Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew. In Genesis chapter 12, God told Abraham to leave his country and from his kindred and, and go to a place he's going to show him. 
Abraham did what he wanted to do, what God told him to do, but he did what he wanted to do as well because he brought his nephew with him, Lot. God never told him that. But he brought Lot with him, his nephew. And because of this, Lot found himself eventually in a jam because Abraham and Lot came to a place of a land, I forgot the name of the place, but they came to a place Abraham divided the cities and told him, you can take the best land for yourself and I'll take the lesser land over here. So Lot decided to go to Sodom and Gomorrah, which was a wicked city. That's where we get, get the ancestry of homosexuality, lesbianism, all that's there from the Bible where they were in the land of Lot. This is in Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. And because of the wickedness in that place, they held Lot captive. They wanted to use, take Lot's door. They wanted to actually rape Lot. But Lot said, I give you my daughter. You read the whole story, you find out he gave him his daughter. They raped his daughter and he killed his daughter. So they held Lot and his wife hostage. Abraham gets news when Lot was held captive. At, so Abraham comes and intercedes for Lot by praying for him. Let's read, let's read it further in our story tonight. If you read about after this attack on David's signs, it's scourging and makes you worry that it's impossible to recover your generation. Do not listen to the devil. When you see how the enemy attacked David's bloodline, his generation, by wreaking havoc to cut off the lion of Judah, God still had a remedy. Because God still calls Israel, who was Jacob, to bless his children, which came from the lineage of David, which eventually brought forth the lineage of the Messiah of the Lion of Judah. <coughs> so let's go a little further. Even Abraham went to war to save his nephew, Lot. Though Lot had not chosen to live in Sodom, one of the twin cities, and expose his family. Lot had chosen to live in Sodom, one of the twin cities, and exposed his family to the degenerate, degenerate lifestyles of the inhabitants. That's what I was just talking about. The homosexuality, the lesbianism, all this mess, idolatry, all that in their land. Abraham was empowered by the Lord to save his sinful family. We all have family members who are sinners. We have family members who do not follow Christ. They ain't even thinking about turning over their lives into the Lord. But yet God puts a burden on your heart to continue to pray for them, to cover them. That God will one day get their attention and draw them to salvation. Just like Abraham, he was empowered by the Lord. Today we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us who empowers us to have a burden on our heart for our children to be saved, to be born again. The only way to be born again is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Believe that he died, was buried, and rose again from the dead. Then you can receive salvation. For St. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Right? So that's a passion. As you receive Jesus Christ in your life, we all need to have a passion for souls to share the good news of your story, your testimony of the things that God brought and delivered you from. Share somebody you know who's living a lifestyle on their way to hell. We can help change their destiny by our obedience, by proclaiming the gospel to them how much God loves them. The foundation of the gospel the foundation of Abraham for his family, his sinful family, was love. If you love someone enough, you're going to tell them the good news of the gospel, whether they receive it or they don't. Because it's not about you, it's about him being glorified. Let's go a little further. A lot of his family have been captured by four kings. And they become slaves when Abraham came to rescue. 
When he delivered Lot, Abraham was referred as the Hebrew, or the one who crossed over, crosses over. You find that in Genesis chapter 14, verse 13. Abraham crossed over with warfare, with a warfare mantle for his family. What was his mantle? The Lord God was his mantle. God was his covering. God was his protector. God used him to intercede for Lot, for Lot's deliverance. We need to do the same. Abraham is our example of crossing over any rivers of doubt that God will save our family from the death and despair. There's nothing too hard for God. You might need a financial blessing. You might need healing. You might need a job. You might need a new home. You might need a new car. Whatever it is you need God to do in your life, God said, do not down your heart, believe in your heart with the things you pray for, you're going to have it. Because prayer is the connection that opens up the spirit realm to release the promises of God into your life. Everybody needs to pray. Say the unsaved, you need to pray. Because God loves us so much. He compels us. The word tells us in St. Luke chapter 18 verse 1, that Jesus said to the disciples that men ought to always pray and not faint. Because it's very important to have a relationship of prayer with God. That's communion. That's your communication. Mono to mono. Where I talk to God, He talks to me. Because if we don't pray, we'll never hear God speaking back to us through His Word. Prayer opens up your ear gate to hear God speaking to you from his word. Because if I give God the full attention he's looking for, my mind, my heart, my soul, my will, my emotions, I have a connection with God. Everything that God wants to speak to me from his word, my ears are open to hear him speak. As I stated earlier, God will send people to speak a word to you from the Lord. To give you the revelation of what you've been praying for. Sometimes, this is so, so awesome too how God operates. Because God will sometimes send somebody in your life who have what you're looking for. You need a new house. The right realtor will come along with the right person who's selling the house and the house will be sold just to you. You need a new car. And you've been praying about the old car you have. Keeps breaking down. Keep investing in it. And it's just a waste of money. God connects the right automobile dealer. Give you the right deal with the right interest rate to buy the right car. Sometimes God would touch a person's heart to give you a car. That happened to me years ago. When I was married, we didn't have a car and our children were small. And we prayed for a car. God connected us with a church organization who gave us a car. God knows what you need when you need it. He said, if God is, is so concerned about the little bitty sparrows, and he clothes the lily of the fields, the lily of the fields, the flowers, he takes care of the fowls of the air, the firmaments, how much greater are you than the things of the world? If God takes care of a sparrow, so he's able to close you, and take care of you. The four kings Abraham battled revealed four warfare strategies that we can use for our families. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 9. Genesis chapter 14, let me go to the scripture right now. I'm looking at it on my computer. This is really good. Genesis chapter 14. I'm going to go up a little further than verse 9. I'm going to go to verse 8. It says, And there went out the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah. My, my, my. This is, this is good. It says, And the king of Abna, Abma, Adma, and the king of Ze Zeboim, 
and the king of Bela, the same as Zoar. And they joined battle with them in the vale of Sidim against Shadow Leoma, the king of Elam, and against the title king of nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Elisa, four kings against five. Says, and the vale of Sidon was full of slime pits. And the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. And those who remained fled to the mountains. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot and his brother's son who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And there came one who escaped and told Abram, Hebrews, for he dwelt in the plains of Mamre, and the Amorites, the brother Esco, and the brother Emner. And these were the confederate with Abraham. These were confederate with Abraham, the compadres. They worked for war with Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, listen to this. When he heard his brother taken captive, he armed his trained servant, born his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left and on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother's lot and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him in Vale of Shavath, which is the king's dale, after his return from the slaughter of Chedorlaomer and, and of the kings who were with him. So Abraham fought for his, his, his brother, his nephew. He fought for his family. So we got to fight for our family. We got to fight for our family because we're living in a time where the enemy is not playing fair. He's trying to attack our families, trying to attack our children, attack our generations. If he can stop you from moving forward in your purpose, your destiny, he can stop from being who God wants you to be in your life. Amen. So let's go a little further. <clears throat> so by following the steps of Abraham took to free his family from slavery, we can release our loved ones from demonic captivity. Warfare. Your spiritual warfare does not mean you fight flesh with flesh, but you fight the flesh with the spirit. When you walk by faith and promise of God's word, you shut down the voice of the enemy. You take back your captive family member and set them free by the spirit of God. Now let's look at these four kings. Look, look at this. The king of Elm. Or Elam, Chedorlaomer. His name implies a binding up. The strategy of the spirit is to imprison by binding up with cords, or to bind so that one is unable to move forward. That's what the enemy does with our generation, our children, our lives. He wants to bind us up when you cannot be free. To move in the ambition, the desires, the plan of God. Many of our generations are in bondage with fear, doubt, and bent mindsets. Our strategy is to ask the Holy Spirit to renew our minds and then ask that He do the same for our future generations. The word says, Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by renewing your mind. The me prove was that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12 and 2. Because we have to know how to pray against the minor forces. To strategize against the spirit of fear, spirit of doubt, and the bent mindset is that, that unstable mindset, that double mindset. Because the enemy wants to hold you in captivity in your mindset. That's why, that's why so many people are dealing with mental illness. Many are dealing with the cycle of ancestry demons who have violated the generation before them 
and have impacted their generation and wants to control the future generation. But once you get a revelation of the power of God, how God knows how to shut down the voice of the enemy and that you no longer hear his voice, you cast him out by the word of God. Cast down every imagination and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You have to be willing to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Not the word of God to speak volumes through you to silence the voice of the enemy. Look at the second one. King of Nations. Title. His name means terrible, great fear, to make afraid, and to cause to shrink back or to crawl away. A coward. Doesn't it sound like a coward? Because that's what he wants to do, put fear in you, make you frightened. Where you want to hide. So instead of facing your giants, the issues you're dealing with, you want to hide them and hide from people from seeing what you're dealing with. I don't want to be exposed, so I know I got a drug habit, I know I got alcohol problem, I know I got sexual sin, I know I got all these issues in my life, homosexuality, lesbianism, drunkenness, whatever it is, I'm going to hide behind the wall in a death structure as a prisoner in my mind. So the enemy imprisons you, he silences your voice when speaking against it. The enemy knows I can terrify you. You ever watch a, a, a horror movie? And there's a plot in that movie where you weren't expecting to jump out at you and it frightens you. The enemy wants to frighten you. He wants, wants you to doubt God's word. He wants you to doubt the delivering power of God. He wants you to doubt the breakthrough power of God, the healing power of God, that I'm going to die with cancer, I'm going to die with diabetes, I'm going to die in my sin, I'm going to die in my issues. He wants you to think that what you're dealing with is the finality of your life. And God says, He who the Son has set free is free indeed. If the Lord Jesus Christ provided the remedy on the cross of Calvary to set us free, when he went into the grave and was buried for three days, three nights, rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, <coughs> Who are you to doubt God's ability to set you free? Another definition of title is associated with the word serpent, which is another word for divination and witchcraft. Ain't that something? Because we didn't talk about this from this book and the book before, the Battle for the Mind. We're talking about witchcraft. Talking about divination, strongholds, bondage, wickedness. So title wants to terrify you, but also wants to put you in this mind-binding spirit where you can't even think for yourself. That's what the enemy does with a lot of people in the body of Christ. He imprisons them in a place of witchcraft. When they wonder why I have the same cycle every year, why I never get delivered, because I've been placed under a spell. You got people who pray negative things over you and hope it happens and they believe it's going to happen. They keep praying these things until it manifests. We have to cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus every day. I plead the blood of Jesus against every spirit of witchcraft and divination come against your life, my life, my ancestry, my generation, my children, my children's children. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Command loose his grip and hold off of you. You're not going to keep going through the same cycle of losing jobs and getting jobs. You're not going to keep going through the same cycle of getting sick with the same illness year after year, the same symptoms and side effects. We rebuke that spirit of infirmity that tries to come upon you to hold you in captivity. 
The strategy of the spirit is cause is to cause such fear that we shrink back from warfare. Our strategy is to bind up occultic powers that hide truth and to advance forward in faith. It's up to you to make a decision. I'm moving forward. I'm heading a new direction. No longer being held captive, no longer reverting back to the things I come from, but I'm moving forward in a new purpose, a new destiny. We have to slay the enemy who comes against us with the word of God. Speak the word of God against the powers of darkness, against witchcraft, divination, occulted powers, lies and deception, controlling spirits, manipulative people. Because the spirit and the people that try to manipulate you and use you. We got to rebuke those spirits and recognize those spirits when they come. The king of China, Amraphel. His name means Sayer of Darkness. That means to speak darkness. The strategy of the spirit to speak darkness, doubt over every situation. If I can speak doubt over you and get you to believe what I'm saying about you, you're going to accept it as gospel. One thing I say to our church all the time is that when you don't study the word of God for yourself and you go to church, the pastor can preach anything he chooses to preach. It may, necessarily, may never necessarily be true. It can be something from his own intellect or something he didn't study that ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. But it sounds good so you believe it because you don't know the word of God for yourself. When a person speaks darkness over you, they're speaking gloom and doom and damnation over your soul. They're speaking for your demise and your destruction because they don't want to see you accelerate and prosper anything you do in life. Parents do it to their children. You just like your father or you just like your mother. You're never going to mount anything. There won't be anything good. So the children grow up believing those negative things you spoke over them and they take it as the, as the destiny for their lives. And their lives end up being in a jumble, messed up, jacked up because you spoke damnation over them. We need to learn to speak life over our children. I said in the beginning of this lesson tonight, we got to learn how to speak life over our bloodline, over our generation, over our children and our children's children. Speak life. Encourage them. Build them up, not tear them down. Tell them there's greatness in them. There's potential in them. There's success in them. You got to encourage them that they can overcome anything they go through in life. Go to college. Go to the military. Have a successful mentality. I will succeed in life. I will overcome the obstacles of life. I will overcome bad habits and strongholds. I will overcome addictions and poverty and lack. You have to speak it to them till they get it in their spirit and believe it for themselves. His words will never offer any hope. The sayer of darkness will never offer the message of hope or message of love. Because all they want to do is continue to keep you in the path of darkness. If you walk in the darkness, you will stumble in the darkness. There will be no light. But if you walk in the light, the darkness never extinguishes the light. Because that's what Jesus says. He's the light of the world. And he says, the light shines in you in the midst of the darkness. So if you have the light shining in you, it expels. Even John the Baptist made it clear when the people asked, are you Elijah? Are you one of the prophets? He said, what are you doing? Why are you baptizing people? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Oh, glory to God. He said, I'm crying in the wilderness. Make straight way the, the, for the one who's coming. The Messiah. He said, I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. He said, I baptize you with water. 
But the one comes after me will baptize you with fire and that of the Holy Ghost. So we got to declare the word of God over their lives. Speak the word of God over them. Even study the word of God with our children sometimes. Teach them the word. God told Moses, listen to this. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he instructed Moses to tell the children of Israel to write the word of God on their foreheads, on the palm of their hands, I mean the back of their hands, keep it in their hearts, keep it in their mouths, do not depart from the word. When Moses was about to die, he called Joshua, who followed him from Egypt, and told him, Joshua, the Lord has commissioned me to anoint you to carry on the mantle. So he had to take Joshua and train him to be the next leader. And what did Joshua do? He came along doing the same thing. He cried because Moses died. God said, stop crying. Put yourself together. Said, you got a job to do. To lead the children over to the children Israel over the promised land, to, to the promised land over the Jordan River. And he told him, you have to be the one to commission them to keep following my laws and decrees. Our strategy is to speak words of faith and declare God's life over a death structure or the death structure. The death structure, what I've been talking about for quite a while, is being imprisoned in a fortress in your mindset of unbelief, doubt, and fear. Because the enemy knows if I can keep you bound, now what it's saying, he wants to bind you up. A serpent, what a serpent does, when a serpent finds a prey, it slowly inches by inch closer and closer to his prey until he grabs hold of that prey, he bites him, releases his poison in that prey, and then he wraps around the prey with a purpose of building a death structure in your life, squeezing the life out of you. The enemy doesn't want you to live, he wants you to die. He come to kill, still and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you life and then more abundantly. The king of Elisa, or Elisa, or Elisa, Ariok, his name means lion-like, like a roaring lion. The strategy of the spirit is to raise his head as a roaring lion that attempts to steal, kill, and destroy. The word tells us that I adversary the devil is like a roaring lion seeking one made of our. He can to kill, still destroy. He his 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 is a false roar or a fictitious roar. So he mimics a lion. Because he's not a lion. He wants to mimic a lion and pre pretend to be a lion to produce fear in you. Our strategy is to guard our ears and our thoughts and not to listen to the voice of the enemy. It's up to you, my brother, my sister, to make a decisive decision that you will no longer listen to the voice of the enemy, to the lies and deception of the enemy, no matter where it comes from. It's up to you to make a decision in yourself. I am not going to be deceived. I'm no longer, no longer going to be manipulated, no longer victimized, no longer controlled by the enemy through other people. Because that's how the enemy attacks you. He, he attacks you through people. He sends people to attack your character, to pull you out of your integrity, to get you into a bad place where you respond negatively and not being proactive. So we have to pray and pray and watch God put the enemy at bay from us as we stand with the full arm of God. Read Ephesians chapter 6, the entire chapter. It tells you about family. It tells you about relationship. 
It tells you about the armor of God. Then it tells you about praying for one another. Because we have to continue to pray for the body of Christ. That they will no longer be victimized by the enemy. Even those who are weak, he said, we are the bear the infirmities of the weak. We must also be there to help lift others up who are burdened down, who've been tempted to fall away from grace, that we'll no longer fall ourselves. As we cover ourselves, we cover our brothers and our sisters, we cover our family, we cover our friends, we cover our associates, we cover our enemies. Because he said he got to pray for enemies. Read Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, entire chapter. He talks about praying for the enemies. He talks about blessings. He talks about knowing the tree by its fruits. He talks about trying to put a, a beam on your brother and you got a moat in your own eyes. Because there's so many different people are hypocritical in the body of Christ are quick to judge you but not judging themselves for their own doings. But when you stand in the word of God and you judge righteously the Holy Spirit will lead you in the way of truth and way of righteousness to speak what God says to speak, unhindered, unchecked by any demonic force, to walk and abide and live and camp and settle in the freedom that Christ has provided for you. We're going to end right here uh, tonight. We'll start next week. Stand in faith for your generation. Stand in faith for your generation. I pray this is blessing you tonight. Even those who hear this lesson later on, I pray a blessing and courage and bring enrichment to them and understanding. So, as we do each week, if you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins known and unknown sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior and I thank you for saving me and I thank you in Jesus name I pray Amen if you prayed that prayer you just got born again and I encourage you to find a Bible teaching believing church and get connected there. Find a church to go to. Somewhere it's going to teach you about your identity in Christ. Teach you about how to defeat strongholds and the lies of the devil. Continue to encourage you to keep standing on the word of God. And learn the word of God. That you get the word in your heart. That you can live by the word of God every day of your life. And find yourself abiding in the freedom that Christ has provided for us. And I guarantee when you do that. The Lord himself. Reveal himself to you in a supernatural way through his word to inspire, to edify, and build you up in your faith as you continue to trust him in his word. Amen. So I pray you be encouraged tonight. Stay in the word of God. Get in your word if you haven't been in your word. If you don't know how to read the Bible, start reading St. John. Start reading St. John. It's a good chapter. Start reading in the Bible. Feel free to give me a call anytime. If you even have a question concerning you read in the Bible. I can be reached at 414-299-6463. 414-299-6463. That's my ministry number. And I pray you be encouraged and be rich in your spirit on tonight. So I pray God continue to keep you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord lift his face upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord give you peace. Amen. Anyone got any questions or comments before we go tonight? Any questions or comments that we want to leave without having someone answer, ask a question and get a response? Amen. I find that there is an end. Thank you, Brendan, for joining tonight. Pray you stay encouraged, young man. That God bless you, you and your family. Amen. Tomorrow, we will be starting tomorrow, which will be August 7th. We will resume in the church doing our weekly Bible class. Do our weekly Bible class. I will still be doing the Tuesday night teaching on, on live stream. We also will be having our Bible class in our church on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock p.m.
Tuesday, 6, 5 p.m. at 3223 West Lloyd Street. 3223 West Lloyd Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you're in the Milwaukee area looking for a Bible teaching a church to be at on tomorrow night, feel free to join us at the 6 o'clock hour under leadership of Pastor Cornell Anderson and myself, the assistant pastor, Pastor Charles Emery of Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church. And we pray you stay encouraged, be enriched in your spirit, and know that God loves you, and I love you, and I pray you continue to share this, this message with someone else that may need to hear it, that they will be able to glean from these lessons that God has given me. Also, my YouTube channel is tagged in the comment section with all the teachings I've done, even the radio ministry I have, where I was on Joy 1340 AM for the last four and a half years, been on there with Pastor Walter Orange, myself. We are still streaming our services and recording them and putting them on YouTube. So I pray you be enriched, because as I say always, Walk in light, it's you in the light, and know that God loves you and I love you. Until next time, shalom. Peace be unto you.